Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 2, Focus, Dedication and Motivation. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr. Andrew Exton. Welcome to the second of our podcast that explores some of the issues and challenges that our young people are facing through this remote learning period and particularly looking at our senior students. And with us again is Joe Parker from HeartSparks. Joe, welcome back. I think there's a phrase that the more things change, the more they stay the same. And I don't know whether that phrase could be any truer at the moment as in the period of time since we last spoke a fortnight ago, we're going into another period of extended remote learning for our senior students. And what I thought we'd talk about today is maintaining focus and motivation and I suppose remaining dedicated during this second period of of remote learning. It's a challenge for all of us. I suppose from your point of view, what are some of the things that you think our young people can do to maintain that focus and motivation when to a large degree, it seems everything that they've been aiming for and striving for has changed and might even be taken away. Mm, thanks for having me back. And you, yeah, you couldn't be more right. There's been so much change even just in this last fortnight, which speaks so strongly, I think, just to the climate in our community right now as things are shifting and changing and evolving every day. I think I'm going to base this on just some of the conversations that I've been having with clients of mine and in particular young clients of mine and the things that have been working really well for them over the last little while. And the first thing that jumps to mind is just that need in times of change, but particularly this time of change to get really, really focused in on what it is that we can control because there's so much happening right now that's evolving and shifting on a day-to-day basis. And amongst that, there are so many different factors that even though we might like to control them, we really have no say over, such as when the lockdown is going to end, what this is going to mean for assessment periods at school, what this looks like for workplaces and job stability and so many other factors. And one of the things that a lot of my clients have been doing that seems to be really helpful is taking a moment just with a big sheet of paper or their phone or the computer to sit down and write down all of the things that they're concerned about right now, or all of the things that are worrying them to some degree. And then to go through each of those items one by one and check in with themselves and ask, what's my level of control here? And then either mark them as zero control, a little bit of control or total control. And there's been a lot of research done around this that once we navigate and understand what we can and can't control, if we're then able to shift our focus and our attention onto those parts that are absolutely 100% in our control, we then have the ability to start to feel more powerful because it feels like we're actually making an impact and having a say over our lives to the best of our ability, as opposed to what a lot of us can do, and I definitely do in stages of panic, which is start to get really worried about things that sit so far out of my control and then start to lose energy and momentum because all of my time is going into worrying about things that I don't get to have a say over whether I want to or yep. not. Another, another big thing here is trust. I think there's so many decisions that sit beyond our control right now and particularly for students be it decisions that are happening at a school level amongst teachers and leadership or at a state level amongst the education department or even just a community level amongst local government and when they sit outside of our control we're forced into this position of needing to trust other people to make decisions that are going to work for us and that can be so hard at a time when 
we just want to have control over that decision making process ourselves. And so the big invitation in that space is to let other people make decisions and release control of the need to make them or even sometimes to know immediately what's going to happen and to trust that whatever decision is then passed down to us, we're going to be able to find a way to work with it and to make it work for us because innately as humans, we're pretty resilient. And whenever something comes our way, we have the internal ability just biologically to pivot or shift or change in order to meet that where yep. we are. And, and yeah, mm-hmm. sorry, Joe, you keep going. No, well, the other thing, and this is this is off the basis of a conversation I had with a dear friend of mine who I actually did my year 12 with many years ago, who's a nurse at the moment. And I we were doing a wellbeing check with each other. And she said to me that, it's been really hectic for her at the hospital right now because of everything that's happening with the coronavirus. And of course it has. But one of the things that she was talking about to me is that we're so used to being in situations where it's people with advanced knowledge that have the biggest impact. It's doctors and nurses and specialists who have the ability to have the biggest impact on impact on medical situations. And she was saying the thing that people aren't understanding is that it's actually the nurses and the doctors that have the least power right now. It's it, We're in a time right now where every micro and tiny decision we make in our day-to-day lives, she said, has the ability to save lives. And she was telling me that she just wished that all of the young people out there knew and that I knew that every decision I make on a day-to-day basis has the power to save a life. And I walked away from that conversation going, gosh, if you need motivation right now, that's where I'm going to get it from. And it struck me that at least this time we've got something to compare to because we've done this before. So there is Mm -hmm. a, a benchmark for how we coped last time. But in saying that, I would say for the students that I taught, there were most, most of them fell into either one of two camps. They either really liked the remote learning period or they really didn't like the remote learning period. And I suppose, how do you ensure that this time is going to be different than last time and hopefully be an improvement in terms of the way that you felt that you were through the first period of, of lockdown? How can we what can students do to, I suppose, change a mindset around thinking that I'm not going to like it or it's going to be bad or ensuring that it just continues to be a good experience? Mm, Such a great question. And there's this concept out there called beginner's mind. And it's based around the idea that every time we show up for anything, we work really hard with ourselves to try and have a fresh mind about it as if everything is the first time. And the benefit of it is that we get to have a lot more adventure and curiosity about the world. But in this situation, whether we like it or not, it is different because the novelties worn off. Like the idea and the excitement initially around getting to spend more time at home, potentially getting to have more free time, which hasn't been the case at all, that novelty's shifted. And so a great opportunity for change in this moment is to now almost cast our eyes back on how we responded, we behaved, we showed up for that last period of remote learning and being at home. And to, with a curious mind, explore what went well what didn't go well and what we might need this time around that we didn't have before that we can ask for because we are in this again, whether we like it or not for the foreseeable future at least. And even though we can't redo that last period of remote learning, we get the opportunity now to ask ourselves, well, who do do I want to be in the world this time around? What do I want to represent and what do I value this time? Also, In hindsight, it's easy to see what we didn't like about something and to get stuck, as you said, in that mindset around assuming that we're therefore going to hate it this time or on the flip side, assuming that it's going to be easy. And so it's important, I think, every day just to check in with our mindset first up in the morning and to set an intention around how we're going to show up for that day. Because the thing that I think we can forget is that we don't make one decision in this on any given moment on any day if we're not liking the way that things are going we get to change again what's within our control and so 
and this has happened to me so many times recently where I've started the day off in a really sluggish way and gotten to about lunchtime and been really disappointed with what I've got done and been feeling unmotivated. But it doesn't mean that at one minute past 12, I don't get to re-choose how I'm going to show up for the rest of the day. And finally, Joe, I mean, I think the reality of these lockdown rules is that they're a bit stricter than they were last time. And even just a, a casual conversation with my daughter before needing to work out the logistics of where her and a friend could meet so that they could be within five kilometres to, to go and exercise together. And it's probably fair to say that this time around, the, the novelty of Zoom and the other methods of communication aren't as high as what they were last time. And connection is more than is more important than perhaps it ever was as we go through a second period of time. Are there any ideas, creative ideas that you have to ensure that our students are making a difference every day, just as your friend talked about? And I suppose the biggest way we can do that is make sure that we follow the rules to the best of our intention. So keeping to all the rules and staying connected, have you got any ideas for how our students and young people in general can do that and still have that fulfilling experience of hanging around with their friends Mm. it's it's such an interesting thing to to look at this time around and the first thing that always comes up for me when i think about connection is that big question around how do we like to connect because it's easy sometimes to assume that we have to connect in the most obvious ways but if we don't like to communicate via those platforms it's never going to feel good and so there, as you said, there's an opportunity to be really creative. I know some students right now that are actually going back to the the idea of writing letters and drawing pictures and physically walking the couple of K down to the mailbox to post them <laughs> to yep. each other so that they're receiving mail. There's some amazing websites out there where you can create little like jingles and songs and outside of places like TikTok or Instagram and send virtual emails and invitations and all kinds of things there there's quiz websites that i know some people are using and then again those traditional methods like instagram messaging whatsapp snapchat all of those places if they're if they have been working for you and you and your friends love them then why not amplify them just on the idea of connection though something that a lot of students have been talking to me about is the need to build connection into their routines they said that it's easy to be on autopilot sometimes and it's been really important for a lot of them to actually make an effort every day to reach out to someone because it was just yesterday someone was telling me that they had gone five days without actually speaking to anyone outside of their household without even realizing that that had happened based on their school being in lockdown and there not being much that they could access in their remote community so just as we were talking last time around about those stepping stones of routine in your day there's a really important need i think to build connection into those now so that it's there well joe thanks for your contribution again we're going to up the level of contribution from getting some staff perspective and other students perspective to add to our conversations that we'll have once every cycle or so. And um, I suppose as we go into this remote learning period and this information gets distributed to our students and parents, if there's any topics that they'd like us to talk about during this period of time, please don't hesitate to, um, to get in contact with us and reach out and Hopefully, we'll be able to provide you with resources and and different tidbits of information to be able to do that. So, Joe, thanks again for uh, for being involved, and um, we'll talk to you in a in a fortnight or so, and we'll have another in- hopefully interesting topic to actually discuss as we get into this get into the into the be middle kind of what will be take care. a reasonably long feeling. I think six weeks or so. Yeah, I think so too. Thanks for having me. And yeah, my thoughts are with you all at the moment. It's going to be a time of change for sure, but it doesn't have to be a bad one. Take care, Joe, and we'll talk soon. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team.